Knife do. More dope. Come and get your figs. What's up, fuckers? Your boy is back with a fresh batch of dope. Knife dope. That's right, people. The hits don't stop. Look at what's made his way back down here to uh, to Knife Dope Studios. This is a knife that I had purchased back in 2022 and ended up selling it. This one is the uh, Arcane Design Pratheon. And you know, I pretty I sold it pretty pretty quickly after uh, after purchasing it. And I actually kind of missed it, you know, I was like, shit, I wouldn't have mind keeping that knife. I should have kept it around a little bit longer. And I just, you know, here and there, I would occasionally would think about picking it up. And then I just, I never did. But I was, um, I had a trade that took place on Facebook. And speaking of Facebook, I have started to get really goddamn active on that platform. So, um, you know, come and fuck around and find out. Uh, but nonetheless, this is the more, um, more premium version. This one's actually in 20 CV. Ended up trading this along with um, a few knives that I sold to the gentleman for um, for the Pony Stout. Or not the Pony Stout. The um, Stout version 1. So all in all, I think I definitely came out on top. Uh, this is a brand new condition. I mean, it's still I can still feel it breaking in. Um, so it feels good to have it back in the collection once again. Don't know how long she'll stay. But that's not what we're here to talk about, people. Not at all. Got five knives that were headed my way, courtesy of the Pass Around Group. And these are all from Reich. Now, if you've been paying attention to what I've been saying, I've been saying that Reich, to me, quite possibly, just might be the Dark Horse OEM of the year for 2024. So we about to find out. And so without further ado, let's get to the dope. Stay tuned on, um, on these bags of dope. Um, for those of you who have reached out to me privately, I intend on uh, actually doing all the shipping of these stickers no later than next week if by next week you haven't received it or or whatnot make sure you check back with me um but if you don't if you didn't manage to reach out to me privately these will be in stores nationwide <laughs> starting next month god damn it all right let's see what we got first first one we got is this one this is the reich cicada now if i'm being 100 percent honest with you which is all i know how to do when I saw the first picture of this, I said, hell no. But now that I've got it in hand, it is exquisitely done, regardless of how you feel about the situation. Uh, so here, the cicada is, is is an insect. A lot of people try to think it, it resembles or um, or they call it a locust. It is not a locust. Um, these come in at $250. Just the attention to detail, the craftsmanship is very impressive when you get it in hand. We've got solid titanium. Love the way they went ahead and they uh, highlighted the wing structure with that gold, um, that gold anodization. I'm assuming uh, they even went ahead and gave us the uh, the pivot like a nice blue anno. Even got a set of eyes on both sides of it. This is a button lock. Uh, there is no pocket clip, unfortunately. So uh, if you don't want to carry it in the pocket, they gave you this ridiculous chain to throw around your neck. I can guarantee you one thing: you will never catch knife dope wearing a goddamn neck knife. Uh, but I digress. We've got a uh, full-length titanium backspacer, single-form deployment, which is this uh, geared wheel. Look at that blade, people. 4.9 inches is the overall length of this knife. We've got 1.96 in this gorgeous dagger uh, blade shape. It is a single-sided dagger, as far as a rather single-edge dagger, I should say. Uh, now, that being said, you could, you could actually sharpen uh, this other side if you'd like. Uh, ergonomically, we've got a nice glass... Uh, we call those things uh, hourglass shape so you got a nice little palm swell with this glorified letter opener and box cutter or wait a minute yeah something like that um besides that i wouldn't really consider this a hard work knife in any regards we've got 70 thousandths for your blade stock thickness 2.46 ounces so very lightweight actions official like a riff with a whistle straight drop action every time now one thing i did notice if, if i give it any type of uh, force i can fail it every time oh shit stand by and it's and it being such a small little thing, you know, it's gonna it's prone to fly out the hand. Uh, but it is pretty cool, you know. Don't necessarily know if I'd be willing to spend two hundred and fifty dollars on it, but if it speaks to you, by all means, jump on it. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put two comparisons up just to give you a better idea on the size of this cicada. Basically, a little bit of knife flexing. You know how the fuck we do. Gotta roll with America first. We're gonna go with the Hogue X1. Next up, one we should all be familiar with, and that's the CJRB Mini Pyrite. That is such a good knife, you know? I had got that last year when it dropped, and I um, hardly carry it, but I use this shit out of it here at the house. Uh, so here you see the cicada up against those. So yep, overall feelings on this, it's more of a collector item, uh, or like I mentioned, a glorified you know, letter opener, box opener. A little bit of a flex knife, you know? You just wanna pull it out, a little talking piece. Uh, but that one was the Reich Cicada. Okay, next up, kind of keeping in the same similar vein, uh, we've got this one, which is the Alien. Now, unlike the Cicada, when I saw this one, I, I, I really was like, oh, that's pretty cool, you know, we can't wait to check that one out. Now, being the, being the, being the name The Alien, they kind of wanted it to resemble uh, the Alien character from the, the, ser the movie series called The Alien. Now, if you were born after 2000, you might not get that reference. Uh, but nonetheless, there was a movie series called The Alien, and that's what this is all about. Uh, this is to replicate the head of the alien. Uh, so the, here it is in the closed position. We've got single form of deployment, or actually two forms. This one's kind of hard to use, but this is your primary um, deployment method. And I tell you, they could have did this better, and this would have been a lot. Uh, I would have enjoyed this knife a lot more. Uh, but let's check it out. Woo! Detent is dialed the fuck in. So there it is. We've got... Um, these are actually retract or rather replaceable blades here. Uh, they come in M390. So this is essentially a utility cutter. It's gonna be great for utility cuts and um, you know box opening, all that type of shit. Uh, we've got a great job they did on the, um, the anodized pivot. I love that color, it's like a blue purple. Um, ergonomically, it does feel decent in the hand, no hot spots to speak of. Uh, smaller knife, we're looking at 4.48 inches as far as the uh, structure itself. Uh, the blade length is um, coming in at two two point zero eight. Like I mentioned, these are an M three ninety seventy thousandths for your blade stock thickness. Uh, they're utilizing a liner lock for this. Uh, it's kind of janky in a way to get to it though, but it is really you know pretty pretty goddamn smooth. Now, as far as this cutout goes, I can reverse flick it. So if I put my finger in there, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up. God damn it, I did it earlier. What the shit? Oh, there we go. You know, it's not the best form of deployment, so obviously you're gonna have to go back to the um, the bottom of, this is actually, let me show you guys this. It comes with two blades. You got the straight edge and you got the uh, serrated edge. And basically what you're flipping is you're flipping the bottom of the blade. So it's not comfortable or enjoyable to the finger. After about 10 or 15 flicks, I was over it. Uh, but I kind of dig it in a weird way, man. Uh, this does have a pocket clip on it. It's got one of those, um, silica carbide balls on the end here of the clip which i'm usually not a fan of but this one seems to move pretty freely uh as far as tension goes it's it's decent uh low clearance though so there you know you consider that um just a glorified utility cutter man you know 215 dollars chinese made if it speaks to you by all means jump on it uh let's put some comparisons up how about this one great goddamn knife as a matter of fact was my knife of the year for the price point last year that's the uh we hyphen and then we've got this beauty from this year, which is the Artisan Cutlery Weigh-In. Yep, Weedin, Weedin, there you go. So there you see the Alien up against those. I like the Alien way more than I do the um, Cicada. So, um, you know, who knows, I might put the, if one of y'all got one of these uh, Aliens in your collection, you wanna trade something for it, holler at me. I'd be, uh, I'd definitely be interested in that. And that one was the Alien. Okay, this next one is coming to us from Kituo. Now, Kituo, I think, is a separate entity from Reich. When I first heard about them at Blade Show last year, I actually met the gentleman who gave us this design. This is the Telson. I actually thought that um, at that time, I thought they were a, I thought they, I thought they were kind of like part of the whole Reich entity, kind of like we have with Savibi and We. Uh, but no, they're their own, um, they're their own company. Uh, so this Telson comes in between 250 and 285. Uh, this is the 285 uh, variant, and the reason for that is this inlay. We've got full-length zirconium inlay, both sides of the knife. We've got a true dedicated uh, form of deployment, which is this flipper tab. Now, the jimping on this flipper tab is um, is not good. It's very slippery. Would have loved for it to have been that nice, fine jimping. Uh, but that being said, it works fantastic. It does fly out. They've also given us this somewhat of a cutout in the blade, like a, like a little bit of a fuller. 
The only problem with that is it's not, once again, it's not sharp. So it's, I can get the reverse flick all day, but the thumb flick is uh, not possible, at least for me. Frame lock is your locking mechanism. Tons of room for disengagement along with that chamfer, gonna make it very enjoyable. Straight drop action. Uh, we've got 8.17 inches over overall length, so full size knife. Blue pivot collars to match the blue hardware. Mill titanium pocket clip. Decent tension on it, but once again, low clearance. We've got a half link titanium backspacer with branding, Kituo. If I didn't mention, we've got 3.7 inches is your blade length. Got a reverse Tonto slash modified sheep's foot apparatus. Almost a full flat grind. 120 thousandths blade stop thickness. Add all that up and what do you get? She's a slicey hoe. I like this one, man. You know, I like it much more than I um than I actually thought I would. So let's put some comparisons up for that. Let's go with the ProTech Mordex. And then this next one is a goddamn good one. I tell you, I got this a few months ago, maybe maybe a month or two at the most. That's the Asher Okudo. I've really been enjoying that fucking thing. So here you see the Telson up against those. So far, I think uh, I think the Telson's gonna be number one so far, as far as uh, the first three. Let's keep it going, goddamn. Okay, next up we got one that I've been really dying to take a look at ever since uh, last year when these first came out. This is the Cybertrix. Now this is the Cybertrix A. They've got an A, B, and C. And the only difference between the variants is the actual blade shape. Uh, these are the most, these are the priciest of the list so far. These come in at $400. Uh, so here it is in the closed position. We've got solid titanium scales uh, with single form of deployment, which are these um, titanium, um, I think we'll call these like uh, slabs or some shit. Uh, nice and centered out the box. Extra long pocket clip. Now, if you notice, there is no hardware visible on this knife which Reich seems to be doing well. They've got a few different models here that have that um, have that done to them. Now, this is really cool. Uh, allegedly, you can just take this, push this up somehow. This full length uh, backspacer is actually, a, I believe, a tool of some sort, or it just holds the knife together. Once you take that off, I think these scales come come loose and then you'll need your, um, your, your bit driver. Uh, but let's go ahead and check the knife out. All right. Now this one is the, like I mentioned, Cybertrix A. So this is the Tonto version of it, or what they call a Tonto. Um, I would probably call this like a modified Tonto, uh, but overall length 7.8 inches. So definitely full size knife, 3.35 inches of Bowler M390 being ran at 61 HRC. Uh, this is also a liner lock. I would classify this more as a sub liner lock or even a um, inset liner lock because it appears the liner itself is is attached to the actual scale. Uh, they've got a nice um, chamfer going around on, on both sides of the knife. Almost gives you a sensation that it's contoured, but it's really not. Uh, 4.58 ounces, no tools needed to disassemble this. That's pretty cool. 150,000 blade stock. I, did, I am not a fan of this grind. It is a shallow, flat grind. So not too sure exactly how good of a cutter this is going to be. Um, don't necessarily know if this is a uh, an EDC. This is more of a gentleman's knife. Uh, once again, of a flex knife. Just a just a knife to have in the collection. I think when these first came out, people were trying to say that they were. Um, it was kind of an homage to the Cybertruck by Tesla. I can't confirm nor deny that, but I can confirm that they did a shitty job on the uh, plunge grind there. You're gonna have to, um, or rather, you're gonna get a smile on your probably on your first sharpening, but. Got enough room to disengage it, so straight drop action. Let's go ahead and uh, put some comparisons up for this one. Let's go with the best Tonto in my collection, which is the Spyderco PM2 Tonto. Last but certainly not least, how about a Rike? We're going to go with the Microtech Socom Bravo Mini. And so here you see the Cybertrix up against those. Yeah, this, um, at least this version of the Cybertrix didn't impress me as much as I thought it was going to impress me. I'm glad because I had almost pulled the trigger on um, on the Cybertrix a couple of times, you know. I had contemplated buying it, but it is done well. I can uh, I can appreciate its uh, its manufacture, its uh, build quality, all that good shit. But it's just uh, I think it's too high as far as price goes. Okay, last one. This one actually has been been the one that I've been the most eager to take a look at. This one is the Lamella. Now these come in at 385 
And this has a revolutionary exoskeleton integral overshell. So it kind of gives you the appearance that this is an integral, uh, but it is not. It's actually got a shell over it and it is locked in place by that slide lock. We've got three forms of deployment. You've got a nicely done uh, flipper tab, nice set of tits, and then you've even got some nice fuller access there. So let's go ahead and go uh, flipper first. Woo! Detent is dialed the fucking. Look at this big old girl coming in at nine inches. And we know what I say. Big girls need loving too. Generous 50-50 finger choil, so you can definitely accommodate that full purchase, no refund. 3.94 inches in this upswept or rather trailing point blade shape. Some might even call that a Persian. Once again, M390, that seems to be all Reich is giving us. Uh, we've got a blasted finish on the blade. We've got, um, now let's talk about this goddamn pocket clip. This has got to be quite possibly the worst pocket clip I've ever experienced uh, this year thus far. It might even be the worst pocket clip of all goddamn time. Uh, reason for that is there is zero, and I mean zero, tension allowing me to pull on that pocket clip. Uh, it appears to me you're going to probably need a pry bar just to put this in the goddamn pocket. Um, now let's go ahead and try the uh, thumb studs. Thumb stud deployment works great as well, and you can even get that fuller. You know... I like this one probably the most out of the list so far. I would have really loved a uh, a smaller version, maybe like a 7.8 overall length. I think would have been fine with me, but I think this uh, this pocket clip is a uh, is a deal breaker for me. Uh, once again, liner lock. Once again, no hardware, visible hardware that is. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this uh, exoskeleton off. So here you see that. That's how you would um, access the hardware. Just such innovation by Reich, man. I really love everything they're doing. Even if I don't like their design aesthetically or uh, functionally, um, I can appreciate what they do. They've got their niche in the game uh, and they do it well. So let's put some comparisons up on this hoe. Got to roll with Big Mama, AD20, baby. So here you see that. Last but certainly not least, a recent acquisition that I'm really enjoying and that's the Miguron Miro. So here you see that Lamilla up against those. I'm impressed, you know, I really am. Still feel that Reich is quite possibly, or I can say that they are definitely one of the best OEMs currently in the game. Um, their ability to, now their designs, that's a whole different ballgame. It's a whole different, you know, argument, whole different discussion. But um, when it comes to making a knife, these fuckers know what they're doing. But more importantly, I want to know what you fuckers think. Tell me all about it. Love you, mean it. Until the next time, cut something, cut someone, just don't cut yourself. Stay dangerous, fuckers!